Greetings ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls, likers, dislikers, commenters, new subscribers, old subscribers and just generally anybody who watches these videos. Welcome back. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. I know it's a different video and oh my god, what's this and oh my goodness, what, what are you filming on? It's not, a, it's not a helmet camera. This is the review I have been trying to do for about five years now after I killed them set of boots. Um, these are the Fox Undertow Special Edition Undertow boot, which they are a good boot, I will give it that. They, this pair in particular, the reason I picked them was because, pure and simple, I wanted a motocross boot. I couldn't stand the way some of the other boots pushed you forward and pulled your legs in and made you waddle like a duck. I went for these because the sole and generally they're an entry level boot so they're not stupidly expensive like your Alpine Stars and they're not cheap like some other brands. Now they are brand I will say. There are brands out there that you might like and there's brands out there that you might hate. This might be one of them. That is fair. But I've been using these now. I am actually on my second pair currently. This pair in particular, now, let's see, you can see there, this pair in particular went through a bit of abuse. Um, I'll give you the story. Basically, I'm a cheapskate when it comes to my bike stuff, as you probably already aware if you look at the state of me. Just what you can see here alone, this is the right side. No, let me try and figure this out. No, that's the left side. That's the gear chain side. This is the side that basically give up after five years. And you all know when bike stuff give up, you can't really replace it. So what you're seeing here is basically where the boot over time has got wet and dry and basically walked in in between. You, you know yourself, you walk, get your boots wet in the rain, come home, stick them under a radiator. I know you should probably not do that, but stick them under a radiator, let them dry, next morning, boots on, go. The leather or whatever fakey ass material that is on them, cracks. And you see, just here, is my blurry ass finger, just this line, is basically, the, the, that that is what that is. Can't really knock it because Five years, come on. You, you, you get five years out of a bike jacket, you'd be lucky. The problem, as you probably see just on the front here, is the sole. Now, they are a bonded sole, so the sole is basically super glued to the boot. And, uh, yeah. After a while, it started to break down. Um, as you can probably not see, because the stupid has focus the sole here has now come away funny story I was coming down the motorway when that happened and I felt the repeated slapping on my foot I as usual thought something was wrong with my bike pulled over nothing there kept going flappy foot again didn't know palmed it off and for about this is how this is this will show you how cheap I am for about a month to two months after I discovered that sole was not uh, fully functioning properly, I basically got some electrical tape and wrapped it around the toe. Can't knock the boot itself. They they do well. They keep your feet dry up to a certain extent. All right. Yes, there's probably brands out there that keep your feet dry all the time, but certain brands in particular that claim that they're bone dry were never bone dry for me and being an all year round rider you need to have stuff that can be dried quickly now you could probably see from the right boot that there's no major damage there's no major creasing there is creasing in it where it does form to your leg and to your ankle and all that there this is the brake side, so you're obviously a wee bit more sheltered and it's doing a lot less than what 
your right, left side stain. I'll get it right, don't worry. But what I will say about these boots are the straps, you can see it here on the left one, you've got the little mountain cables. What I'll probably do is inlay a video in this video at this part showing you how they actually clip on. It is so easily done. It is stupid. Problems discovered with the boot. Obviously the toes, the toes have a habit of cracking. That obviously with me drying them out and then using them and then getting them wet and then drying them out and then using them. It's a repeated stress process. Can't knock it. Can't knock them for loving their money. I do get asked the question a lot, and that is, Dunky, why these boots? Pure and simple, why these boots? You could have the CD type, you could have, you know, not brand specific, but you could have a race boot, you could have a shoe, you could have generally anything smaller than this, and it'd be way comfortable, and you don't walk like a duck, and... I'll, I'll be honest, I've had CD vertebrae before, they were great, but uh, at the time I changed across to a cruiser, so race boots and cruisers, they don't go together. Now what I will agree with people is, and as a lot of people will point this out to me when I'm wearing them, is, oh, them boots don't let your ankles move. That is true. My thought process to that was, well, your leg is, what, two pieces, knee, knee and ankle. If you can stop the ankle from moving, you know, the knee, it's a bigger joint. There's a lot less sort of complicated stuff there. So let it twist there, not your ankle. Your ankle is connected to your foot that has so many ligaments and stuff to it. It is unreal. Um, it does have a rubber pad on the side here it covers the toe and round as you can see here round to the fox logo and back onto the heel now that gives the shoe, the boot itself a lot of structure nothing steel toe cap like but it gives you a lot of uh, protection from your engine side and anything that would protrude from the engine what you can see here is the fact that Round. Get that leg out of the jet. What you can see here is basically the both sides showing. Now the pivot system on it I would say was the cheap cop out sort of side because if you look at it closely, focus, if you look at it closely it is a simple, basically a simple pivot and click system. Now the pivot and click, that does it, opened. It's plain and simple, it's easy to use, but after a while again, everything degrades down. And once everything starts degrading down, you're into the realm of buying the spur parts for it. And then you're after this, and then you're after that. After probably three years, the little rubber caps, oh, I'll not be able to show you with this camera, but I'll put a picture in and around this so you can see. The little rubber caps do actually degrade in themselves, which cheapens the look, cheapens the feel to the user. And it's not a nice thing. So onto the sole, the biggest, biggest, biggest pro of this boot is this, it's like a non-slip enduro class so as you can see not much wear on the bottom now to put it in perspective for people who maybe watch this and go what gives you the right to review this boot and give it such a good rating i wore these and i have people who can confirm it i wore these day in day out for five years at least Maybe, what you say, working, I work five days a week, Monday to Friday, I'm wearing them at least twice in a day. I maybe walk to the shop in them, I'll walk to the local supermarket in them, I'm constantly walking mountains with them. 
I use these like trainers. When I first seen the sole on these, I sort of panicked because as you can see on the outside of the white, it has started to fade, which I don't know how the hell that happens. But again, the big letdown was the contact between the sole and the boot because the super glue, it's plain and simple, the super glue and I think a wee bit of stitching in underneath, basically that is it. So, as I was showing, the, try and get this in for you, I need a new lens, the new lens is too blue and expensive, so, clip, 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 opens, big hollow inside, and uh, yeah, if you focus, come on, focus, focus, there we go. So it is a generally good boot. I always revert back to this one because if you can't see, just here, this is one of the problems. That is what I found uh, shortly after start, well not shortly after, actually it was about two years, three years in. I will focus, oh, you can. You're not gonna mess me about, right. Find that hole, that hole, is what I was talking about due to the drying and the, the getting it wet and drying and getting it wet and drying. So what I want to show you is the sole because this one no deflection in the sole at all. Maybe a wee bit of glue loss here. This one. This one is the problem. This one is your gear change. This one is constantly moving, constantly bending, constantly doing something. Now, I'll just do this slightly, and if you can see it. No. Look at that. This was the problem. There you go. Now, all that's holding that on is super glue. Right. The only reason it is actually taking a wee bit of effort to get that that I got was because before I bought the second pair, I decided that again I was cheap and stuck a whole load of Airfix uh, glue into it. So Airfix glue inside, seal it up, and electrical tape wrap around it. Now. This was down the motorway. It's like meh 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 all the way down the motorway. This is what was freaking me out. If Fox ever watches this, and I doubt he will, stop super gluing it. Give us a bit of quality in our in our boots. I will come back to them every time for this. And these boots after I strip these bits off them, will be in the bin. Once again, I've been XT Donkey. You guys have been awesome. This has been a gear review. And uh, keep it lit. If you can't keep it lit, buy some new boots. They might work a lot better than these. Incoming!